If China tries to invade Taiwan, there's a good chance that the first wave won't be met by missiles or marines, but by a fleet of fast, low-profile unmanned surface vessels or USVs. In late August of 2025, Taiwan publicly demonstrated a USV launching a swarm of loitering munitions at a naval target in a first that we've seen. This is part of Taiwan's bigger strategy that some refer to as the boiling moat. Make a Chinese amphibious landing so complicated and costly that it becomes nearly impossible or at least makes China think twice about it. Welcome back to Task and Purpose. I'm Kyle, and today we will be talking about Taiwan's drone boats, what they're capable of, how they may be used, and why these are a big problem not just for China, but for any country trying to pull off an amphibious operation or one that just has a pretty big navy. Taiwan and much of the rest of the world understand that if China makes a move, it will be really difficult to stop. The People's Liberation Army Navy, or PLAN, is the largest in the world, and the most likely scenario is a combined air and sea campaign, followed by an amphibious assault on the island. That means the moment of maximum vulnerability for China is when its ships are in the water, approaching the coast. Taiwan's goal is to make that initial push and any resupply efforts extremely costly. Much like the US and others, as we've discussed in a previous video, Taiwan is investing heavily in asymmetric weapons like land-based anti-ship missiles, sea mines, mobile artillery, loitering munitions, and now drone boats meant to break up Chinese landing operations by forcing the Chinese military to slow down, scatter, and make mistakes. Before we get started, we want to thank Odoo for sponsoring today's episode. If you're still managing your business with a mess of spreadsheets, sticky notes, and a patchwork of apps, stop the chaos. Odoo brings it all under one roof with a unified business management system that covers everything from sales to shipping to the shop floor. Odoo gives you full control over inventory and manufacturing from a single dashboard. You can track receipts, deliveries, point of sales orders, and work orders in real time. You'll see exactly what's moving, what's delayed, and what needs attention. You can automate vendor reminders, schedule shipments, scan components with a mobile barcode app and update worksheets or bills of material on the fly. Whether you're running one warehouse or 10, Odoo keeps your operation fast, accurate, and fully connected. The best part though, everything talks to everything. Sales, e-commerce, CRM, inventory, manufacturing. It's one connected system, not a Frankenstein of bolt-on. So if you're done taping your business together with whatever software you can find, head over to odoo.com. Your first app is free. No trial, no credit card, no nonsense. You've got a business to run, let Odoo make it easier. In recent months, Taiwan has unveiled several new uncrewed systems that are meant to accomplish a wide range of missions. While this isn't all that they have at their disposal, these are the major players. Perhaps the most notable is the Kwai Chi. It is one of the more advanced systems and is the one that launched the loitering munitions in the August live fire test. It's a low profile design with a catamaran hull capable of speeds up to 43 knots. Real quick, because I'm going to be saying knots a lot, one knot is a about 1.15 miles per hour, meaning you just multiply the knots by 1.15. So 40 knots is 46 miles per hour. The Kwai Chi is powered by twin engines and appears to use lightweight composite materials to reduce the radar signature as well as the weight. It's modular and has been seen outfitted with a UAV hangar, loitering munitions launchers, ISR sensors, jamming systems, or even a shaped charge warhead on the bow for kamikaze style strikes. Think of it as a floating weapons truck that can scout, jam, launch drones, or simply ram and detonate. Sea Shark 800 is a larger armored evolution of the Sea Shark 400 used in earlier 2023 drills. It retains a similar high speed hull form, but has been significantly up armored and enlarged, likely measuring around seven to eight meters 
or 26 feet in length. The hull appears to use reinforced composites designed to withstand small arms fire or fragmentation, suggesting that it's built for close range contact or kamikaze style strikes. Powered by a high thrust outboard or water jet system, think like how jet skis are powered, it offers rapid acceleration and tight maneuverability at speeds of over 50 knots. Its flat deck and modular profile suggest payload flexibility ranging from explosive delivery to potential patrol, interdiction, or electronic warfare roles. It's less stealthy than the Kwai Chi, but looks built to take punishment and deliver it with a possible explosive charge of over 1,200 kilograms, or about 2,600 pounds, and a range of 500 kilometers, or 310 miles. Endeavor Manta is an 8.6 meter stealthy trimaran that appears purpose-built for intelligence, surveillance, and command and control roles. Unlike the kamikaze style design of Sea Shark or the weapons forward configuration of the Kwai Chi, Manta's strength lies in endurance and stability and has a top speed of 35 knots. The trimaran hull provides exceptional control for its size, allowing it to operate further offshore or hang out in rougher waters without sacrificing much performance. It's equipped with satellite, cellular, and radio communications, making it a likely node for coordinating swarms or relaying ISR data back to command centers. The faceted hull, which just means it's flat, angled surfaces, and its optional manned cockpit hint at a dual-use potential possibly allowing for training, remote handover, or fallback manual operation. While no offensive payloads have been confirmed, Endeavor Manta could serve as a battlefield router, maritime scout, or mothership for smaller autonomous systems. Piranha 9 is a 9 meter or almost 30 foot long water jet propelled craft designed primarily for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance roles, but with enough modularity to carry weapons. Its low slung hull appears optimized for stealth and speed close to shore, and it's powered by an enclosed water jet system that reduces both noise and vulnerability compared to traditional propellers while pushing it past 50 knots. The onboard drone hangar is reportedly capable of storing and launching one or more small quadcopters or loitering munitions, giving the platform multi-sensor or limited strike capabilities. With sufficient satellite or line of sight communications, Piranha 9 could be used to scout landing corridors, relay training data to land-based missile batteries, or even deploy decoys or jammers during early stages of an amphibious assault. While not as heavily armed as the Kwai Chi, its agility and sensor suite make it ideal for battlefield shaping, especially in the hours or even days before contact. All four of these and many others are being tested by the National Chungshan Institute of Science and Technology, which I'm just gonna call NCSYST for short. This is Taiwan's main defense R&D agency, and they're mostly testing these in the open, either because Taipei wants China to see what they have, or they just realize that they can't possibly keep them a secret because they're so close to China, they have a limited coastline, there's just not a whole lot of places to hide, or maybe it's both. The headline test came during Taiwan's annual Sea and Air Precision Ammunition Firing Exercise held at the Jupang Base in Pingtung County on August 20th, 2025. During this drill, the Kwai Chi launched multiple Qingfeng loitering munitions from its deck toward a designated maritime target. The Qingfeng is a short-range loitering munition built by Taiwan's NCSYST. It carries a modular warhead and uses GPS and optical terminal guidance to strike fixed or mobile targets, including radar arrays, light vehicles, and small naval craft. In design and function, it's broadly comparable to loitering munitions like the Switchblade 600 or Poland's Warmate, but this is optimized for compact deployment from mobile or maritime platforms. What made the test significant wasn't just that the drones launched, it's that they were launched from a moving, uncrewed boat and guided via Taiwan's existing command and control infrastructure. That means that the system wasn't just a prototype, but that it's been integrated into a real-time command network. In a war, this means that Taiwan could forward position Kwai Chi boats, which they plan to order about 1,300 of, and they could scout Chinese vessels, launch loitering munitions from over the horizon, and even follow up with kamikaze strikes, all without putting a crew in harm's way. So let's talk a little more about how these could be used.
Here's how this could play out in a real conflict scenario. Imagine the plan assembles a flotilla of Type 75 amphibious assault ships and landing craft escorted by destroyers and other ships and begins transiting the Taiwan Strait under heavy air and electronic warfare cover. As the formation approaches Taiwan's southern coast, the USVs quietly deploy from concealed coves, fishing harbors, or are just towed to the coast and launched from trailers. Using terrain masking and a low radar cross-section, they push out in small swarms operating in shallow water, hugging the coastline, or waiting near key choke points. Some Kwai Chi boats hang back and launch alerting munitions like the Qingfeng to locate and mark high-value targets like radar arrays, close-in weapon system mounts, or bridge structures on amphibious ships. Others act as decoys, intentionally generating electronic signatures to bait Chinese defenses into revealing their positions. Small, one-way kamikaze craft may push in close, aiming to strike directly with onboard warheads, hitting at the waterline where armor is heavy, but any damage is potentially a huge problem. And all this is networked through Taiwan's infrastructure and can be retasked mid-mission. Meanwhile, Taiwan's land-based systems, because we cannot forget about those, begin layering in firepower. Shungfeng 2 and 3 anti-ship missiles, coastal artillery batteries, and fixed-wing UAVs begin engaging the most vulnerable or exposed Chinese vessels. The drone boats don't really need to sink the ships themselves. They just need to break up formations, overload sensors, and funnel vessels into certain areas, and create windows of opportunity for the heavier weapons to hit. The goal isn't always just destruction, and in this case, one of the major goals is disruption. They want to force the flotilla to break formation, create confusion, slow down the landing timetable, spread out Chinese assets so they're easier to pick off. All of that buys time for Taiwan's air and missile defense systems to activate, and for other branches like the Army or Air Force to reposition and respond. This is how Taiwan plans to fight, layered, mobile, and chaotic, not just one big giant punch, but with a thousand small ones, like Manny Pacquiao was known to do, that can make an invasion too slow, too dangerous, or too expensive to win, in a perfect world anyway. Of course, your adversary always has a say, and the Chinese aren't waiting around to solve for the USV problem. The plan has spent years preparing for the exact kind of saturation threat that Taiwan's drone boats represent. Its frontline warships are equipped with layered defenses, starting with long-range interceptors, down to short-range surface-to-air missiles, and finally close-in weapon systems like the Type 1130, which is a 30mm Gatling gun capable of firing up to 10,000 rounds per minute. These are designed to swat down incoming drones, missiles, or small boats. In addition, China also fields a lot of electronic warfare capabilities both on ships and on land that can jam GPS, spoof satellite links, and sever remote control signals, potentially neutralizing any drones before they even reach their targets. And China is also developing its own uncrewed naval systems. The Jari USV, at least I think that's how they're pronounced, is roughly the size of a rigid hull patrol craft, and it's been tested in autonomous mode with integrated sensors and a small weapons payload. In theory, a fleet of Chinese USVs could be used for screening, intercepting, or even hunter-killer missions against Taiwan's drone boats before they get within range of the larger, more important ships like those massive landing barges. But this all depends on reaction time, sensor fidelity, and targeting bandwidth, something that Taiwan's USVs are designed to overwhelm. They're small, low-profile, and hard to distinguish from civilian boats in a cluttered environment, but as we've seen, China isn't really afraid to go after fishing vessels. The boats don't emit much heat, and they can stay under radar coverage for as long as possible, and they come in numbers. Even if China's defenses work perfectly by tracking, classifying, and destroying every inbound drone, that process still consumes valuable time and resources. It forces Chinese ships to activate defensive systems early, burn through ammunition, reveal emitter locations, and potentially compromise their formations. In a coordinated attack, just slowing the PLA down is kind of a win for Taiwan. As of now, these USVs are in the testing and evaluation phase, but if Kwai Chi and its sister platforms continue to prove themselves, they could be mass-produced in the next 12 to 24 months, 
And just as kind of an aside, the speed at which Taiwan has developed these weapons and fielded them is pretty impressive. So if push comes to shove, they're more than likely capable of spinning up production pretty quickly. If they can do that, that would give Taiwan a highly scalable fleet of robot boats that can be stored in fishing ports, launched from hidden coves, and deployed during the opening hours of a war. By no means is this a silver bullet solution, but for a small nation like Taiwan, it's probably the best they're going to get right now, at least on their own. Taiwan and others push into USVs isn't just something for China to consider, but also other large naval forces like the United States. The threats that these small, relatively cheap, and plentiful systems present help bring balance in naval warfare and China is no doubt considering this in any move they make in the region. I wrote the script and Savvy edited the video. Today I'm wearing the Shoot to Chill shirt. You can get it at store.taskandpurpose.com and remember to use code ACTUALLYWATCH to get 10% off as my little thank you for actually watching to the end of the video. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, gripes, moans, complaints, anything you got, go ahead, drop it in the comments. If I see it and I, I say if, I'd love to read every comment, but we're getting more of them, which is awesome. And I do my best, but for now, I'm still just one person kind of doing a lot of this stuff. I have other people, but it's a lot of work. So if I don't get to your comment, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. Um, I do appreciate it. I appreciate everything. Now I'm just gonna shut up. I'm Kyle, your friendly ginger producer man. You are all dismissed and I'll see you next time.